Hello everyone, this is Counter Yellow, bringing you another video in Star Trek Online. And in today's video, we're going to talk about the Tier 6 Rising Corvettes. We actually have two different ones that have, have been announced today, so we'll get into the intricacies of how both those versions are going to work. But first off in this video, I'll talk about why the Rising Corvette was my favorite starship in Star Trek Online, both from the aesthetic standpoint as well as the unique thing that it came with the certain starship. Then we'll start with the stats for the two starships, and then we'll get into the comparisons. Then talk about the trait, the console, and the experimental weapon, and then do a TLW at the at the end of the video. Talk about the whole summer event in general. Feel free to see the time links in the description. So, obviously, for some of you that were paying attention on SGR Reddit, the stats for this ship was actually released a little bit over two days ago. Um, it was a, it was an accidental post um, on Cryptic's website, but thanks to STO Bot. Um, automatically posting the descriptions for all those things the moment that things are published on Cryptic, even if they're being taken down. For those of you that are paying attention on SDR Reddit, you actually could have seen the stats for the Starship two days ago. However, for me personally, I like to show the cool pictures that they do use and then the post, so I was waiting until today. And also seeing if they were adding a, a very important thing, which I really like, in the Tier 5 version of the Starship. First off, the Tier 5 version of the Rising Corvette has tons of pay customizations options, which I would imagine is still going to be on the Tier 6 version as well. You don't have customizations as much with a Starship shape, but it had so many different paint options that it was kind of ridiculous, to be honest. However, also to be honest, I mean, the black with the blue stripes was honestly the coolest look of all of them, so that was, that was what I used on, on, on this when I used to, used to fly this. Also, back when I was terrible at making builds, and I showed off my tank Rising Corvette, which, oh man, I was terrible back then. Um, you'll see that I used the black with, with blue stripes as well in, in, in that video. Anyway, um, I loved it because of this, because it was the fastest ship in the game at that point, and now the Tier 6 one ha is even faster than the, the Tier 5, which is pretty cool. The next closest one, frankly, are, are the pilot escorts from the Sea Store, and the Kellen Timeline um, Bird of Prey. The, um, all of those ships have a 0.24. Everything else is drastically slower than that. So it, it, it is called a Corvette. It is meant to be the fastest ship in the game. The other thing that was pretty cool with this for me as, as a tank especially was that it, you got additional defense with this ship based upon um, based upon your impulse speed. So the faster that your, your impulse speed was and, and the scaling of that on it, you got an additional def uh, percentage extra defense to your ship, up to an additional 15% defense. Because of that extra extra defense, in my opinion, this is the best defensive escort in the game, the best tank escort in the game. However, um, in the raw stats on on this on on these two starships on Cryptic's website, it does not list this this um, passive defense bonus on, on the ships at all. As thus, we don't know if these ships have that extra defense bonus that, that the tier 5 one version had. If the tier 6 ones do not have this, you could actually still make an argument that the tier 5 version is actually better than the tier 6 one from a defensive standpoint. And you would have to get to the fleet version to make it better. Just, just as an FYI to you all. Um, obviously for just as recaps, for the general S escort subclass, it's four weapons in front, three back with the experimental, or five two plus one. Most of them are four or three plus one, but you start to see a lot of five two plus ones within the, within the past two years or so. Um, the general things about the escort class that typically it's, it's a higher turn range speed with lower hold and shields. And of course, all of them can use dual heavy cannons, so that's not really a surprise. The tier five version has this innate defense bonus based upon your speed. I've listed it here, but we really don't know for sure if this is actually on the ship or not. But for the rest of these stats, it, 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 it's a 4-3 it's, it's with four tactical consoles, so this is not going to be a meta PvE DPS starship. This is a starship that is meant for P PvP. If, if, you're not in in, if you're not super invested into, P into PvP, you still can play this in PvE, but there's obviously a lot of other better options that you, you, you can play. It's definitely the fastest ship by far. It's one of the, one of the best for, for turning. There are a few rated subclasses that have 22 or, or a 23 turn rate, but having anything above 18 or 19 
in my opinion, is really, really good for turning. Plus, it's got the best inertia inside the game, which means that whenever you turn, it turns quicker and easier, and you don't have as much like sliding going on on your starship. The consoles and stuff, it's meant for all that. For the bridge off your seating, um, you, you get a pilot seat, which is pretty typical for a lot of PvP starships. Um, in terms of the two specific starships themselves, this is the event version on the left, and then the uh, fleet version on the right. If you're actually looking at the two starships, they actually have the same amount of consoles, which is actually pretty in in interesting. Basically, if you don't want to get the fleet version, this one is still perfectly respectable to fly for endgame. Um, it's just that the typical standard for fleet versions is to have a 10% higher hull and shields. There was a little bit of complaining going on, like, well, this ship, these ships don't get a lot of extra hull and shields on them. Well, it's still 10% extra durability on the starship. If the hull and shields are lower, the extra 10% extra durability is going to be less, frankly. Um, in order to get the fleet version, you have to have earned the event version in some format first. Uh, so just as an FYI to you all. Also, also keep in mind, the bridge I've seen does change drastically between the regular version and the fleet version. The regular version has a temporary universal pilot. The fleet version moves that pilot from the Lieutenant Commander Universal over to having one in the, the commander seat as well as the Lieutenant Tactical seat. Because it has a Commander Tactical pilot for the fleet version, you do get pilot maneuvers additionally for the starship. Um, it, it only costs one fleet ship module and 20,000 free credits and having a fleet military at tier one in order to get this starship. Um, I think we are starting to move into that with, with what, what fleet military tier one is going to be. And in a different video, I'll talk about my speculation as to how I think things are going to end up becoming in Star Trek Online for, the, for those lower military tiers inside the game. Um, I mean, other than the words I've seen changing slightly and slightly lower sh lower hull and shields, these two ships are fairly comparable. I mean, basically, the biggest thing you're getting is that you get a lot of extra versatility on the commanders tat uh, on the two tactical seats that you have here. So that you're you're forced to pick a bunch of defense or a bunch of DPS options here because in PvP, having a lot of extra survival options for your starship is pretty important. Because being able to survive long enough to deal their damage so that you're not a detriment to your team is very, very important in PvP. In PvE, well, if you die once or twice during a run, as long as you did about a zillion amount of damage during that, then it's totally fine. Now, for the Star Trek comparisons themselves, I am going to be starting off comparing between the three Rising Corvettes that we have inside the game. The Tier 5 version, the Event version, and the Fleet version. Um, there's not really a lot of differences between here. I mean, the Tier 6 versions make the Lieutenant Universal a Lieutenant Commander Universal, which is nice. Um, keep in mind, I, I didn't list the normal Tier 5 version of Rising Corvette because... Um, even if you get this from Phoenix Lotbox, the Tier 5 U upgrade is free on the Starship, so you might as well just get, get it to Tier 5 U anyway. Um, this ship does have the listed speed defense bonus on it. These two ships do not, so I have listed it here, and I have not listed it on these other two Starships. It is possible that the speed defense bonus on the original Rising Corvette could be on the other two Rising Corvettes, but at least as of the making of this video, there has not been any clarification on that. There definitely could have been people that respond to me on, on Reddit that might have said yes or no that this is on, on, on the Starship. But obviously the big thing as well is that the impulse is higher and um, that the fleet version has pilot maneuvers because it has a commander tactical pilot. And that the fleet version has 10% higher hold and shields over these, these, these guys here. Other than that, nothing super spectacularly different between them. And in the rest of this video, I'll be comparing the, the other starships to the Fleet Rising Pilot Cor Corvette. Uh, I'll first talk about the two starships that I used to like a lot for tanking in, in PvE. Um, with the new Fleet Rising Corvette, um, this is basically taking over my, my old number one, which was the Lachis Hatet Escort. With the extra stuff that you've got here, this one has a bazillion amount of pilot abilities, which a lot of to really easily have some extra, extra defensive abilities for tanking and such. With the pilot abilities here, it just makes things a lot more flexible, frankly, than what this this guy originally had. I basically had to have both of these seats be um, engineering as well, which made things kind of awkward for some of the pilot abilities. 
this one, I can now use most of my tackle seats for, for pilot abilities and, and do some other cool things with the other Lieutenant Commander Universal here. Um, the Gemini Strike and Recon Ship. I like the Recon Ship the best because you get Lieutenant Commander Tactical Pilot and Lieutenant Universal Intel. The Strike Ship is Lieutenant Commander Tactical Intel with Lieutenant Universal Command. In my opinion, the current meta for PvP is having Pilot Intel as your, your special station seats. Pilot gives you a lot of survivability. Um, Intel also gives you some other stuff as well, especially with an um, intelligence team, which, which is pretty valuable. This ship has, the, has access to the Dominion console set, including the, the Domain Defense Screamers, which, which comes off of these starships right here. Um, but again, this is because of a specific console set, plus a lot of the higher base stats, which, is why, which makes this thing really strong. These ships are way slower than the Rising Corvette, like as you're going to see with all the other ships in this video. Now, one of the uh, premier PvP starships for Move really, if you didn't care about cloaking, frankly, was the original pilot escorts from the, from the Sea Store. These ships start out with, with endgame stats and everything. Um, it is a 5 5 2 layout for its first weapons, plus the experimental. So it, it is a bit more offensive in nature, but it is a bit slower. And, and it's got the same thing with here with a commander attack pilot with a l l lieutenant pilot seat as well uh, on top of it. Um, if you wanted to use this in PvE, you can make the Lieutenant Universal and other engineering so you can, you can easily do Ox to Bat with Marines Powered Women's and Marines Powered Engines and be able to, to do all that perfectly fine with, with like an Ensign Engineering or something like that if, if, if you want it. Obviously, this is better for PvP, but you know. Also, also, the Roman version is just better because you get a battle cloak with a lot of these rough stats, too. The Allied Pilot Escort Bundle, in my opinion, isn't particularly great um, on, the, on the Starships themselves. It's, a, it's actually the Starship traits from, from, this, um, from this gigantic pack is why you buy the Starships in the first place. But that's just my personal opinion on it. It does have the Allied Dogfighter set, which, since the Domino console is one of the meta uh, consoles in the game right now, if you have access to that, then you can then you can use these the, these um, consoles from the set to add to the own console and add a lot of extra benefits too to your starship. Um, from for more starships for, for PvP, the Phantom Intel is one of the more recommended starships for PvP, especially on the very version side. There isn't a Klingon version, but we'll get to a really strong version later, which is what Klingons are probably going for anyway. Um, the Intel Escort is basically the Defiant, in my opinion, that we'll see in the next slide, but has has a built-in cloak, so you, so you don't need to sacrifice a console slot to get it, which is pretty nice. Plus, it's got Intel abilities. It doesn't have pilot abilities, but I mean, pilot and Intel, in my opinion, are, are the two strongest for, for PvP. So, I I think it's completely fine. The Cardassian Intel Escort is a doable one from the from the C store. It is a bit slow, having a point two. Zero impulse, in my opinion, is probably what you would be looking for, but I mean, this is still perfectly fine too. For more um, starships, these are the two ones that I think fans in the game, especially for the looks of you know, your, your hero starships, will really like. The Defiant from the TV show, the Series 6 version of it, is still respectable. Um, it's got a decent hole and shield ratio. If you use the cloak console from the Cell Fighter set, you can put a cloak on the starship, which is totally cool and fine. The NX, most people buy this ship not because of the stats themselves, but because of the point defense of Bombardment Warhead for a lot of your DPS builds. On some builds, especially if you don't use, use Phaser, Disruptor, or Plasma, will not use the point defensive or warhead. They'll just use the DP arm console instead, and it'll list a lot of other consoles in its place. The ship is still respectable as well. Temple Rogers Pilot isn't as great, in my opinion, but Temple Rogers is still fine. It's still serviceable. And is a bit more offensive in nature, and a little bit slower than the Rising Corvette, too. For Raiders themselves, as a reminder, Raiders lose one weapon slot to get their Raider flanking bonus. Um, plus, if, if, if a Raider has a Commander Universal Specialist seat, they do lose um, their Ensign Bridge Officer seat in their overall seating as well for that for the, for the cost of the extra flexibility on, on the Starship, which is why the Urbos Temple Raider doesn't have the Ensign seat um, on, on the Starship, but it is, it, is, it is a really fast Starship. 
As you can see here, it is one of the few stars that actually has a higher turn rate than the Rising um, Corvette. Um, but I mean, when you look at, in general, the turn and impulse is actually a lot closer to the Rising Corvette on, on Raiders than on even your really fast escorts in, in the game. The Vanguard Heavy Raider, in my opinion, is basically just a slightly squishier Gemini Recon or Strike Ship that, that can use those Dominion exclusive consoles as well, alongside the Gemini Vanguard consoles as well. But most of the Gemini Vanguard consoles kind of suck, to be honest. So you really would be getting it to use the Dominion console plus Raider flanking, plus you get the Wing Mechanic on top of it too. That's your jam. Feel free to use, use it. From the fleet, of course, we have the recent pilot escorts and bird of parades, which are just raiders for the, for the respective factions. When I was going through the Starship Comparisons video, I realized that actually historically the Federation raiders were called um, light escorts, and for Klingons, their raiders were called birds of prey. And all of them have bow cloaks. So they were the original ships that had bow cloaks on them. They have, they both have a commander tactical pilot and, and, and a lieutenant pilot as well, which is completely good as well. Um, turning is, is on par with this one, but slightly worse impulse. So, in my opinion though, the stats of these ships are all pretty, pretty close to the same, frankly. Just that you have one weapon less to get ready to flank it. A lot of people love, love the Maquis Raider. I think it's a bit overvalued, especially in PvP, because Miracle Worker isn't really that great in PvP. Just going to throw that out there to you right now. The Miradorn is actually a terror in PvP, um, for those that don't care about cloaking, because the Privateer set is actually really, really strong, which is an ex exclusive console set. It's really, really good. But yeah, and it also has pilot maneuvers and improved raider flanking, so a really strong raider with pilot maneuvers to get, to get behind people really easily. Still fast with, with, with a decent turn rate, too. Obviously, nothing's going to be apparent to the ship because it is the fastest ship, but it's still perfectly respectable. And for our last ships in this video, we'll talk about the two birds of prey that, in my opinion, probably, if they're not the best, they're definitely in the top five in my opinion for pvp the fleet Braille bird of prey is a klingon starship that is a raider with an enhanced battle cloak it's the only one to my knowledge in the game that has both an enhanced battle cloak and has raider flanking i mean there are starships like the kevin timely version which has a battle cloak and raider flanking and pop maneuvers but i mean this is the only starship in my opinion that has the only one i've been able to find a way that has Raider flanking with an enhanced bow cloak. Enhanced bow cloaks are actually really rare in the game, so and this one comes from from, from your fleet. So and then the Kelvin timeline bird of prey, only Klingon captains and Klingon line Dominion captains can actually fly this starship. No one, no one else can. Romulan captains can't fly this ship. Federation captains can't fly this ship or anything equivalent to, to this starship. For Federation captains, you have the Kelvin Enterprise instead. For the Romulan captains, you have a Kelvin Timeline um, um, Carrier Warbird instead that has two pilot, uh, a two hangar base. So, yeah, KDF captains get a Kelvin Timeline Bird of Prey that's actually really, really strong too if they decided to spend a lot of money on the, on the exchange and buy it. Now, for the Starship trait and console weapon itself, the Starship trait is actually really in interesting. I'm probably going to a different, actually a different video entirely. I'll probably talk about why this thing could be very, very good for PvP. So um, the description says the ox to damp or pilot abilities, I mean, I neglected to say that, but also pilot abilities proc this to give you additional damage resistance rating and weapon power cost reduction. And the big thing here is going to be that it's not just ox to damp, but also pilot abilities. So this synergizes as well with like Ox, or sorry, with Cold Hearted. That also procs off of pilot abilities too. I think this is going to push towards, I think this trait by itself, combined with other things that are existing in the game, is going to help push us towards that basically the best PvP starships are going to have pilot, have lots and lots of pilot abilities on them. 
And I find that that's what's going to start to push us towards that. Um, the weapon, the solution wave, the experiment month weapon, it's called solution wave impeller. I might spelled that wrong, but the experiment weapon has a 100% chance to slow. The, how much it slows is supposed to scale with engine power. We don't know the numbers, so we don't know how much that is yet. Also has a chance for additional radiation damage over time, too. PvP, one of the more annoying things outside, if you know, placates and confuses, which I'll talk about in a different video, is that you have these fast starships that get away really easily. And when you have an experimental weapon that slows enemies so it's harder for them to get away, or they can't get away as quickly, it gives you some extra counterplay to work with. The console itself, we don't know how good it's actually, well, the big thing is that in the description, it says that it's usable by all starships. However, if we go by the historical precedent in this game, that if you have a tier five starship with a console and a tier six starship with a console, if the tier five version was exclusive to certain starships, then the tier six one would be exclusive to certain starships. We, we would assume that this console would be exclusive to rising starships. The description for the, for the tier six rising Corvette says that it's usable by all, all starships. I would be totally cool with that. Uh, I mean, the console is is a very niche circumstance in which it, it's a lot more of it's a it's a situational escape for PvP whenever you have whenever you have raiders um, that are flanking you and, and trying to kill you really quickly. It basically slows them down a whole bunch of speeds you up a bunch so that you you can get away from the, from the raiders that are attacking you in in your rear arc. It's basically a tier 6 version of the old Rising console, but if it's able to be used with all starships, that just adds more usability to this um, stuff inside the game. They they did add the new ship-related feature that you you can buy a better fleet version of the event starship from your fleet. That gives you the 10% hull and 10 additional hull and shields with that different special seating. Um, I'll talk in the gambling and loot box video or a follow-up to that one after I make that video, depending on how long that video ends up being, because that's already a long video in and of itself right now, as to what this is going to be meaning for the future of Star Trek Online. I hope this wasn't what Cryptic was saying, hey, we have a new cool feature coming out um, at, at like during the, the summer or end of the summer. I hope there's something else beyond this, because this is definitely not enough for the removal of, of the Phoenix store, but I hopefully they have something else that we talked about too. Now, the big thing here, the big red flag, is that the old Tier 5 Rising Corvette had a, had a passive defense bonus that gave you up to 50% bonus defense based upon, you know, what, what your throttle and how fast your ship was actually going. This is not listed right now on the current version of the Tier 6 Starships, so this is not guaranteed. In my opinion, this is what made me, what, what made it really fun and, and good to fly this Starship, especially for tanking. Hopefully, Cryptic if they haven't already added this, or they forgot to add it in the um, the video, that, that they do add this to the Starship, because this was the biggest thing going for the Starship. If you take this past events off, then it's just like any other old Starship, and it's just a little bit faster. Now for the CLDW for this video. So obviously this summer we have the, we have the summer event. It starts tomorrow, July 2nd. It goes through August 15th. It's, 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 it's an all three platforms at the exact same time. They did mention in the stream last week that there are some errors visually on, on that'll be for Xbox and, and PlayStation that they cannot fix because they it takes a while for patches to go out and it's expensive to do patches for, for, for console players. So there'll be some visual bugs on, on RISA that you'll just have to deal with during the event. Especially if, if you're going if, if you're going to fly through the caves, some of the stuff there is going to look, going to look really wonky and weird. They also have some new summer items, some some consumable things, a baseball ground device, and some cosmetic stuff. If that's your thing, feel free. Cool. I'm not a fan of those, but I, I know there are a lot of people that are. And that's something cool for you to do. I mainly just do the flying high mission for the 25 days to to get the um, starship. That's how many days that you need. You can feel free to go to the one vendor and spend a lot of low buy to earn this, to get the vouchers, to get the starship if, if you so choose to do that that way. 
um, if, if you're running out of days. The big thing for the starship is that it, it's the fastest starship in, in the game. It should be a meta PvP starship. There are, uh, there are a couple of situations, but in my opinion, it should be a strong PvP starship. It's also a fun one, obviously, for PvE, but it's designed around PvP. Especially this, the trade, the concept, uh, it's an experimental weapon. It's all screaming, please use me in PvP combat. Now, um, definitely with this, there has been a there's been a slight resurgence in PvP and Star Trek Online. And I think this the starship is kind of speaking towards those players. Feel free to seek that feel free to seek them out on SDR Reddit and on various PvP channels inside the game and on Discord for their their specific input and perspective on the game for how these things are going to impact the current PvP meta or if this is going to drastically alter how how the meta currently is. I'm not super active in PvP anymore, so I'm not as in touch with them as I used to be. So you'll need to really talk to them to really know how strong this is going to be for PvP. Just as, as an outside person, looking at the raw stats and then of, of, of themselves and seeing a lot of sets of other starships in the game, this, in theory, should be a strong contender for a PvP starship that should be considered to fly in, in, inside of the game. Whether it is remains to be seen, um, in, especially in those those communities that talk about this more. But in my opinion, if you're going to fly the starship, in my opinion, the reason why you would is if you don't care about exclusive console sets, if you don't care about raider flanking on, on your starship, if you don't care about cloaking, if you don't care about powerful intel abilities. If you don't care about those four things, I think this should be a strong meta PvP starship in, in, inside the game. My opinion depends on how much you value those things, as as whether you'll think this is a strong ship or not. This is definitely not a starship for PVE builds. And you can definitely do it for fun, but it, it is not designed for PVE. It's designed for PvP. Also, for me personally, I really want to know if the Tier 5 used defensive bonus is on the new starships. If it is, then in the general escort class outside of warships and juggernauts, this should be the best ship to tank on again in, in the escorts in, in the escort class, especially in the, in the escorts um, sub subclass in general. But anyway, that's basically it for this video. Um, keep in mind they're also um, doing um, a, a limited time this week to being able to buy a tier six vouchers directly from the C store, so that you you can either either use it or you can gift it to other players inside the game. So especially if you're in a fleet, for instance, and you're wondering what to give your, uh, your, your fleet mates for prizes and such, this is a really, really great option. Because, um, yeah, um, before, the most that we could do was get starships from, from the various loot boxes inside the game. But now with this temporarily for a week, we might be able to give something else to newer players inside the game for something really valuable, like giving KDF players a Voral support battle cruiser so they have a really nice um, survival starship tree for them, plus a decent console that gives them fire and cycle haste and, and defense. Very, very nice and valuable. Um, if you're curious as to what, what ships to pick with, if you're, if you're given one of these inside the game, I've already covered that in a different video for the best value um, Cheap on ships or something similar to the to that, to that effect on, on on the channel. I'll probably have have, have, have a link in the, the description to, to that as well. Um, but yeah, um, thank you all for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day.